y'all, I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Jane Davenport art journal. It is almost finished here and I'm going to be using a few new stamp sets. These two are from the Whimsical and Wild line from Spellbinders and Jane Davenport that released recently and I have these in an unboxing video that I will link below um, or link above with information on a recent haul I got from scrapbook.com. And then I picked up this set from Tuesday morning, also Jane Davenport. So I'm excited to work with these sets. I will link all the supplies below. Otherwise, I'll put you on fast forward. Let's go. So my whole vision for this page started out from this set with the giraffe and it has this girl and I want to use her as kind of the base for the entire page. So I'm gonna start off using some of my Burst Fine Onyx Black ink because it will not bleed or run when I add water and there will definitely be water on this page. And I have my girl and I'm going to add a skirt and I want her skirt to start out as her skirt and to kind of turn into a hillside, if that makes sense. So it's like her beautiful dress is just evolving and turning into a beautiful hillside. So I kind of sketch out where that's going to be. And then I'm going to start with adding color. And I put this in super fast forward. I'm using Distress Oxide ink and these new dome blenders from scrapbook.com, which work fantastic. I'm going to use tumbled glass. And then I also come back with some mermaid lagoon just to add a little bit more dimension and have the basis for the sky, which will be the background. Now I've grabbed my Jane Davenport watercolor and I'm going to use the smush technique. It's just a piece of of plastic packaging that I'm layering some color on, adding it on plenty of water and just smushing it down on my page. And you'll see I kind of turn it because I don't want it to be so spotty. And the whole purpose of this is just to start adding some layers to the background of my page. I know it's going to have lots of color. I've been really into Jane Davenport recently and so color is what is drawing my eye. And so I'm just adding some different colors here on the background. What happens with mixed media is that oftentimes it looks like a really big mess until it doesn't, if that makes sense. So it, it starts to look messy. It looks chaotic. It looks like there's way too much going on, but this will get toned down later with some stencil work. I'm sticking primarily with purples and blues and kind of some jade greens going on here. I want it kind of splashed across the whole page. This is again, kind of forming the sky behind my girl that will soon have the most gorgeous dress ever. Here I come with my yellow. I have a water brush and I want to add just a little bit of highlight around the girl and this will set her off and it actually ends up setting the tone for her clothing later. I add just a little bit of color and then rinse it off and come back with the water and I'm blending the yellow out so it fades into the sky, kind of like she's giving off a sheen, a glow, if you will. I want her to stand out some more from the background. So just adding that yellow highlight to um, bring some more attention to her. Now I'm still focusing on the sky that I have going here in the background and I've pulled out this floral stencil. I'll have to look up, I believe it's from the Crafters Workshop. I picked it up this summer. I'm using my Pixie Spray, which works fantastically for stencils to keep them in place. You can see you can stick it down, it stays in place. I've pulled out Dusty Concord Distress Oxide ink and I love this stencil because I am in love with masking stencils. I think they are so fun to work with. You'll see I'm putting being pretty heavy handed with the Distress Oxide ink right here and it's going to really nicely tone down what is happening in the background. So you see I pull it up and now you have these beautiful florals as if the flowers that will soon be on her skirt just also rose up into the sky and I'm adding this floral border around all of the edges of my sky. You see I'm not going all the way close to the skirt. I need a little bit of a break going on and just working it around one spray of the Distress Oxide spray allows me to really adhere the stencil over and over. It does not leave a residue on my project and once you rinse it off, it does not leave a residue on the stencil. It is just fantastic. I use it all of the time on my stencils and it has really helped give me some clear, crisp images. So I have all my florals now. Again, it seems really busy, but it will start to tone 
down. I come with my watercolors and I'm adding some more dimension and outline to her skirt now. As I begin outlining the skirt, I decide it looks a little bit stark next to the changes or the colors that are right next to it. So I pull my water brush in and I'm actually just squeezing out a lot of water. And because I use Distress Oxide and watercolor in the background, as I add some more water, it really is starting to tone and blend nicely. And then I even go over some of my stenciling and that softens the edges right on the outline area. See, adding a little bit more water and makes it blend really nicely. And I'm super pleased with how it fades in from one area into the other. And I think it creates a very cool effect, a very whimsical, dreamy effect for the sky. I'll end up doing the same on the other half of the skirt as it comes out behind her. You can see me kind of following that line where her skirt shall be and blending that same little bit out. And once I'm happy with how it's blending into the background of the sky, then I start working on the line of the skirt. What I'm looking for is, is a definitive line. I want it to um, definitely look like her skirt that she's not floating in the air, that it kind of is, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where I got this image, but once I saw this girl, I just knew she needed a fabulous outfit. So I'm adding a little bit of a darker color right there on the line to really divide the space. And now I'm going to come in at the bottom. So like I said, I sprayed some water and I told you I wanted it to look like a hillside. So here we go with the teals. I'm going to mix teal and some lime green color, a little bit of yellow in here. And I just made sure to use plenty of water so that the watercolor would move easily and blend and just kind of organically become what it was going to become. I didn't want to force it to much. I'm adding blue over the top. Yes, it's very dark blue. I'm trying to cover up a little bit of the stamping that I had up there. I do have another solution for covering it up later, but I just decided, you know, her dress would start with blue and then it fade and evolve into the rest of this colorful hillside, which is kind of what I go with. I'm going to bring the blue down a little bit more as we work. Now, this is another stamp set. This is the one I picked up from Tuesday morning, and I am using my archival ink to stamp on top of some Jane Davenport scrapbook paper. The scrapbook paper that she has has like a coating on top of it, so you definitely want to use the archival ink and make sure it dries because it will smear. It doesn't soak in quite like it would to regular cardstock. I'm going to fussy cut all of these little flowers out. Don't worry, I won't make you watch me fussy cut them all out. I'll do these and then I will do one size up that also came as part of that floral stamp set that I purchased. And I will use these to incorporate into the hillside of my beautiful lady's skirt. Now here is the larger kind of medium size flower that also came in the stamp set. If you know what type of flower this is, you're going to have to let me know in the comments below. My sister was actually a florist and so it's crazy that I don't know the names of flowers, but that is just not something that sticks in my head. So if you know what type of flower this is, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I am fussy cutting these out as well using my small detail scissors, which really help for fussy cutting um, little pieces like this. I have my array of flowers and I'm going to use them as the beginning of her skirt. So here you see, this is how I'm going to cover up her legs that are still kind of peeking through. I'm layering in these floral pieces and then they will start to just scatter as they become the hillside that I had imagined. I'm using my uh, liquid glue, just basic Elmer's glue. It has that nice um, precision tip, you might call it, so that I can get it right where I want it. But it works really well in art journaling pages and keeps things nice and secure, which I've had um, a few issues with for some of my journaling. You can see I'm layering in some of the larger pieces first, and then I'll come back with the smaller pieces. No really rhyme or reason to where things are. I just kind of want it cascading down the hill. Um, as her dress just turns into this beautiful floral hillside and then you see those florals mirrored in the sky above in this kind of just beautiful dreamlike sequence which i am loving 
Now, the whole reason I bought these new Jane Davenport Whimsical and Wild stamps are for the animals. I am loving the animal theme that she has going on, and so I'm going to include an animal on this page. But first, I want a place for the animal to rest. And so I have this little gathering of flowers that came with the set, and man, I did not get a good impression. And I'm not feeling great about what that looks like. I decided to go ahead and trim off the rest of my flowers. So I want an animal to like live amongst those flowers and I decide that didn't work out well, but I'm just gonna think on that for a moment. And I'm going to use this yellow piece of paper as the basis for my animal. And I don't want the giraffe to be solid yellow. I want it to have some dimension and interest. So again, coming back with my watercolor, blending it using lots of water on the page. I'm actually using this hot pink, which when you put it on the yellow cardstock has a very cool orangey, tint which i think works really well for the draft i pull out some metallic watercolor i'm going to add a little bit of a wash of metallic on here then i end up drying what i have on the page because i want to add some bronze splatters i love 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 splatters i think they are so fun and interesting so i dry the page off so that my splatters won't run into one another and you can see i get this very cool ring going on there in the middle. Here's my bronze splatters adding on. And this is just a fun way to play with paints. And then I'm gonna be able to stamp over the top of it, get a precise image. And I was able to play and yet still get a very specific uh, paper piece that I wanted for my project. So I pull out my giraffe, I'll ink it up with the archival ink right here, nice and well inked up he is so cute he's just sitting just resting sweet giraffe just resting there i stamp him over top of the watercolored paper once it was all dry so it wouldn't smear and then i will fussy cut him out to include on my page so the original plan was ha to have the giraffe sitting amongst these flowers, but I didn't get a great stamped image and I feel like he looks like he's floating a little bit. So I want a place for him to rest. I pull out some acrylic paint in this bright yellow and I'm just using my finger to stamp it down or to lay it down to add a little bit of texture. And then I'll come back in with some more layers. So I have just a little bit of orange here to add some dimension. And you can see I'm being really careful about where I place the orange to mix it in and then I also pull out some gold and place that in and this is just creating kind of like a little nest a little place for my giraffe to live I'll add the liquid adhesive on the back I don't know why the giraffe is in a nest of yellow paint but I think it creates a grounding place for it, it covers up some of the bad stamping that I had going on and in the end, I'm super pleased with how he is just resting there. He's looking up at the lady that has created this beautiful hill for him to live on. And it is, it's just lots of fun. Whimsical is the perfect phrase for this whole line from Jane Davenport. They're fun to work with. They're inspiring. This is the phrase stamp that came with the giraffe set. And it says, giraffe wisdom. Stay above the drama, stretch yourself, stick your neck out, enjoy the view, and stand tall, which is just a wonderful phrase for an art journal page. At this point, I know my girl needs to be filled in just a bit, so I take my Prismacolor pencils and I'm going to kind of include that same yellow hue that is in the giraffe. So it's almost like this girl has a spirit connection to this animal, which I just love. Filling in some of the shading on her body and then I will make her a beautiful brunette because I like doing brunettes because that's the color of my hair. So I'll, I'll include the brunettes in there because I think blondes get a lot of the attention sometimes in art journaling. So I always like to include a brunette just for fun. I am loving that golden yellow color and I decide I want to include it on other parts of the page. So I come back with my watercolors and I'm going to do the same thing. That's that same scrap piece of paper. I'm laying down a lot of water, a lot of base yellow. I'm going to mix in some of the pink, end up doing splatters and such just like I did before, just to create a dimensional background that I can use to cut pieces out of. And this is a fun way to just add a little bit of extra interest. Um, you know, I could have just cut 
the giraffe straight out of this paper or I could have just cut these stars that I'm about to cut out straight out of this paper but it's fun to play it's fun to mix it up and add dimension even on just regular colored photocopy paper so I dry that again love my metallic watercolors I would use them all the time if I could adding these gorgeous splatters and I end up using my silhouette machine to cut out a variety of sizes of stars and I'm tracing the stars with a black sharpie because I want them to have a little bit of a black border around them nothing too precise it gets a little bit wonky at times but now I have all of these gorgeous stars that I can spread across the sky of my spread I feel like the stars really help bring the whole spread together. It lets you know that that is for sure the sky going on up there. And I like the connections of the yellows, of the colors. You really feel that there's a connection between this giraffe and this woman and these stars and that they're just caught in this wonderful dream sequence. And it's so fun. I love the imagination that comes with art journaling and just seeing where a page takes you as you create. I decide to nestle a couple of stars right there with the giraffe just to show how connected they are. And this page is pretty much done. As always, I will link all of the supplies down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that bell notification button. I also have a link below to a new email newsletter that I have started that is full of organizational hacks and crafty tips, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you're interested in receiving that newsletter every couple of weeks, make sure to sign up below. Thanks for joining me for this crafty video. I hope you have a fantastic day and as always keep it creative.